It's time to have some fun. Night talk with Sam. Oh, hey, hey, Sam. Catfish. Hey. How's it going, brother? It's going good. It's going good. We were, uh, we're getting ready for the show. Uh, have you seen Heath anywhere? He's right here somewhere. Oh, okay. Well, uh, hey, I love that song, by the way. That's, that it, that's still one of my favorite songs. Yeah, you still owe me money for that song. I do? Yeah. You never paid me. Well, you paid me, but the check bounced. Oh, well, I meant to tell you that uh, you just had to wait for, I, I had to put some money in there. It's been like 10 years ago, Sam. Well, I didn't, I, I mean, if you look at the check, I think actually it, th there should be a, yeah, I know it has been a while, uh, but I will get it to you. How about that? That's, it says maybe in 2030 I'll be able to get my money. Yes, 2030. That would be perfect. Another 10 years. <sighs> yeah, you know, I just wish I had the life that you have. That being a puppet, that's... Well, Sam, I know how to make that happen. You do? Yep. You just got to wish it. You got to wish it three times. Say, I wish I was a puppet. I wish I was a puppet. I wish I was a puppet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. oh yeah, 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 okay. All right, all right. I'll, I was going to say, uh, would you change into something else if you said it three times? Nope. All right. Okay. I wish I were a puppet. Do I have to click my heels too? It might help. Oh, okay. All right. I wish I were a puppet. I wish I were a puppet. I wish I were a puppet. <laughs> it worked. Whoa. What happened? You wish you was a puppet and now oh. you're a puppet. Oh my. Look at this. I have puppet hands. Oh, this is great. Yep. <laughs> Good times, good times. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, you want to sing the theme song now? All right. It's, it's time, time to, to have, have some fun. Night, night talk with Sam Are you mocking me? I tell you what, why don't we just roll the theme song? All right. It's time to have some fun. Night talk with Sam B. Mud. We got skits and inner. is on. Light Talk with Sam Beeman. Hey everyone, I'm Sam Beeman and welcome to Light Talk. We're so glad that you're here and we've got a great show lined up for you today. One of the things that I wanted to, uh, to focus on today is, um, is basically just encourage you to be kind, to be nice, to be respectful. I know, I know it's not popular, but hey, it is, it is something to consider in a time where maybe we feel like, you know what, I should be able to act the way that I want. But really when we're looking out for other people, it, it shows that we care. So let's make sure that we, uh, we show them how much we care. All right, well, I've got, uh, I've got some great guests lined up today, including Heath Williamson and uh, also Shonda Pierce. So why don't we take a break? We'll be back with Heath in just a moment. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but tonight is a very special night for me because this is the first time I've been back on this stage performing probably in about 20 years because I used to be the youth pastor here. <laughs> yeah, the last time I was on this stage, I was being crucified. <laughs> I was Jesus, okay? I was about 22 years old, and I'm sure that I was, I was the only Jesus that probably had blonde highlights and a goatee. So. <laughs> yeah, in fact, we had a cross. It was, uh, it was actually over here to the side, and uh, they had a scene, you know, where Jesus is being whipped. He's being whipped by the Roman centurion guard. And so I had a friend of mine play this Roman centurion guard. Yeah, I had this friend who was playing this guard, and he, he had no acting experience, right? But we had several rehearsals to make sure that I didn't get hurt. So I gave him one of my, my personal, I've got, I like Indiana Jones, so I have a, I have a whip. It's not a bull whip, but I have a whip. And I was like, hey, you can just use this, no problem. Just whip the side of the post, just whip the side of the post. That's all you gotta do. So the night of the play, I'm over there, you know, just straddling the cross. And so it's a real emotional scene, you know, like music is like, oh, and I'm over there, Lord, please, please. And he just, he's giving it a good flash. He's like, whoosh, and he hits the side of the cross, and I let out a yell, ah! And he whips me again, whoosh, ah! And then a third time, now he's saying, he's saying, Jesus, whoosh, Jesus, whoosh. But at that third time, he said, Sam! <laughs> <laughs> he whipped me right in the side, 
<laughs> with me right in the side. I let out the most blood curling scream I've ever let out in my life. Afterwards, people came up to me. It's the most emotional version of the passion of Christ that I've ever seen. It felt so real. I said, that's because it was. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, as promised, I've got my first guest in the studio here today who is the writer and singer producer of the Light Talk theme song. Please welcome Heath Williamson. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I know you're waiting for the applause, right? <laughs> it's, vir it's virtual, right? Like yeah. everything's virtual. So yeah. That's right. <laughs> and now, Heath, you, you've been doing music for a long time. I mean, it's not just Light Talk's theme song. I mean, you, you're such a talented guy in many different facets, but you started in the 90s, right? Well, I started playing in the 80s, but I started playing, you know. Professionally. Yeah, if you want to call it what we, <laughs> if you want to call it traveling in a van across America, not getting paid professional, then yes. But yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Jesse and the Rockers, pop Jesse. punk band, Christian pop punk band, late 90s. Man, that must have been exciting right there. It was. I wish I would have been smart enough to enjoy it more because, you know, you know how ambition gets in the way sometimes yeah. of enjoying the ride. You always think there's a destination in your career. Like once I arrive there, everything will be fine. Yeah. But the thing is, your career is the journey and it's, and, and it's getting there. So now at this point in my life, I'm just enjoying the journey, wherever that may be. And today I'm on Light Talk, hanging out with you. We've been playing with puppets and I've been out in my backyard burning leaves. <laughs> Doing yard work. So glamorous life of a musician. Haven't had a gig in seven weeks it's since it's been shut down. So, and, it, and you know, I, I got a lot of friends are all like, oh, I hadn't practiced this much in so long. I'm learning all these new licks and stuff. I've touched my, I haven't touched an electric bass in two months. I haven't touched uh, my upright in probably three weeks. I got a house full of kids, man. Well, well, you know how it is. And that's a, yes, I do. I do know how that is, and that's a good thing, you know, uh, from being a father. You know, someone who's enjoying the ride, you know, enjoying the journey. Like, I mean, here you were on Jesse and the Rockers, and of course, you know, you've got to make sure that the family is taken care of, and and so you know, here we are at this moment in time where we're not able to to be doing you know gigs whether it's DJing or uh, or you know musical gigs of any facet uh, or comedy and uh, and so or, or acting but it's like God has given this this opportunity to be able to spend more time with the family to be able to do more things around the house like burn leaves I've taught about 15 years of <laughs> neglect <laughs> yeah so you know in looking at the silver lining of it all you know, you, it, that's the positive. Honestly, I was really, I've been wanting a break for years, but as you know, you, you have to take the gigs when they come. Like I play upright bass, in case they don't know, for yeah. Joe Jack Band and for Skylar Softly. Um, and, you know, I, every weekend I'm playing, and sometimes during the week too, I'm playing, you know, close to 200 times a year, you know, so I'm always having to work. And so you can't take a month off I can't yeah. take a month off. So this has forced me to take some time off, and I've, I've actually enjoyed that part of it. Haven't enjoyed not having money, but there's more to life than money. That's right. You're absolutely right. And and just uh, and I'm thinking about uh, Jesse and the Rockers for a moment because I remember as a as a teenager, I think it was like late teen, early twenties. I remember seeing you guys. I'm just thinking about like you guys were like on G Rock or yeah, it was on G Rock on TBN. You guys just walking down the street. And who was the host on that? Do you remember? Um, Remember, well, we hosted it. Oh, you hosted the whole yeah, thing? We oh, okay. hosted it three different times, actually. Wow. So, so they bring a band on, the band would host it. So that, that's what I'm thinking of, is that just like from where you started, or like where it looked like your professional career was starting, and, and here you are, you know, a dad taking care of his family, you've done so much. You even played with uh, Blues, uh, Blues Traveler? Yeah, yeah. well, the, the John Blues Popper, yeah. 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 Did some shows of him. Yeah. It's just amazing. They were talking about the time I accidentally played with Doug Stone, the country artist from the night. No way. We was playing a gig up at Luke's Pub, plug for Luke's Pub up in Ellerslie, Georgia. And um, all of a sudden, this, this guy comes sits in with us. And all of a sudden, people start pulling their cameras out and they're filming and shooting. And I'm like, what's the deal? Like, what's going on? Oh, that's Doug Stone. I'm like, call my wife, like, you know who Doug Stone is? And she's like, you're yeah, the, the Pine Box guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that, you know, 
<laughs> Weird things happen when you get out there in the wild and play these gigs. There's so many cool, there's other cool things that's happened, you know, and you just have to appreciate the, the cool things, you that's know, right. as they happen. You never know. Well, I tell you what, why don't we, uh, why don't we take a break here for just a moment. Uh, I want to, I think I want to show, uh, why don't we do the mullet combat skit? That uh, one of the mullet combat skits. Did you ever finish it? I, well, I, <laughs> my parts you have. I think you well, finished one of them. We got one of them. We got one of them. And, oh. uh, and I think we need to show that one. This is uh, you and Don Terrius. Uh, you guys are like, he's the boxer? Okay, yeah, I remember yeah. that one. Okay, so, it's been a while. So why don't we go ahead and show that skit? We'll be back in just a moment. Mullet combat! Bro! Get off my property! We're not going for a round today. Chew on this, boy! I'll dot you in your eye. Dad, 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 dad! Go to heaven, ass! Time for a knockout! Upper cut! Go to heaven, ass! Now that's what I call a win. Mullet combat! Mullet combat! We're back with Heath. Heath, uh, let's keep this thing rolling here. I like to um, I like to talk about something else besides like all of the fame, you know. With, <laughs> with, with right. <laughs> well, everything you've done has been uh, has been quite extraordinary. But there's something even more extraordinary that a lot of people may not know, or they may because they're fans of Heath and the Checker Shoe Band. Yeah, it's my puppet show I've had now over 10 years. I mean, eight albums. Eight albums. Eight albums. Just finished the eighth album. Still, it's still going. We, we're slowed down a good bit, but I just finished my eighth album. It's called Short Silly Songs, and it is getting pressed as this. It, probably by the time you watch this episode, it'll be out. Okay. Um, and where are those, uh, the, the albums? Where can they get those? They can get them at HeathandTheCheckerShoeBand.com. Okay. All right, cool. Hopefully. <laughs> I was telling Sam earlier my website's in limbo at the moment, but we're on, just look us up on Facebook. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Heath and the Checker Shoe Band. Yeah, go uh, like It's not checkered, it's checker. <laughs> check them out. <laughs> check them out on uh, Facebook, and uh, that way you can give updates, especially if the website is up and running. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. I'm too I'm too cheap to pay the eight dollars a month for this. <laughs> I want to go somewhere else. You're still you're Another still story. You're still waiting on the five hundred, right? Join my Patreon, folks, <laughs> for one dollar a month. Well, I'm serious. For one dollar a month, that's a quarter a day. You could support a, a Christian television show that that's aired on the Christian Television Network nationwide. You could be a part of that for for just a twenty five cents. You'd give me that if you saw it on the street, would you? Some of y'all probably would. I can't afford that. That's not a dollar a month. That's what the tax on a cup of coffee at Starbucks or something. Yes. Now, um, in in thinking about uh, in thinking about your Patreon, how how can they get that? Is that it's all on the website and stuff. It's all on. Go to Facebook and it's all there. But you also you also put out a DVD series that you provided for pastors, churches. Like, wasn't there? We've done a lot of them. We. Um, Got to give a shout out to Avery Jones, who's you should know from. Years well, he's before. he's even in the uh, uh, the opening credits. Like, oh, okay. yeah, he's. So yeah, we do the show together, and um, uh, we did a, show, a series called uh, Well, Well, Well. We got commissioned to do, and it's in two languages. Really? And yeah, that's wild to see somebody else do my puppets and speaking Spanish, and uh, <laughs> then we did a series called Hey Hermie, which was a character education uh, videos. 35 episodes of character education. So, and then we have CDs, DVDs, you know, tons of stuff. You got all kind of promotional items. I, I think, I mean, I even saw a sticker. In the, yeah, there's stickers over there on the, the studio. The, yeah, back in the early days when we first started, we used to come here and use the green screen before we set up our shop. That is awesome. Yeah, well, uh, Heath, before we jump out of here, um, I just want to say thank you again for producing the theme song to Light Talk. Oh, yeah. Uh, because uh, it, it's become something that, like, when people hear that, doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo, like, they know what's coming. 
And uh, I mean, you originally started that out on the guitar. Like, wasn't it with Catfish? It's been so long ago, Sam, I have no I idea. It, it developed into something. Yeah, there's no tell. Because I remember uh, there was a, I think he was auditioning for the show for Light Talk and he was in the backyard or something. That was Chumbies. Was it Chumbies? Yes, yes the first, when we filmed in your garage. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah that was Chumbies. So you have to check out that episode. It's somewhere uh, on the internet. Uh, Light Talk, Heath and the Checker Shoe Band. That's, that's before I had my better puppets. Uh, <laughs> don't check it out. <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, break here. We'll be back with Shonda Pierce in just a moment. Thank you so much, Heath, for being on the show. Uh, we'll be back. Have some of that coffee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Sam Beeman. You're watching Light Talk, and we're uh, here with our improv actors, uh, Casey and Heath. And guys, we're going to play Sounds Like a Song. And I know that you're already ready because you have your ukulele there. <laughs> and, of course, you know how this is. I'm just going to let you do the scene, and then at any given point, I'll say Sounds Like a Song on whatever line that uh, I feel like. And then I just want you to uh, just take it away. Just Let's, see, let's hear what you got. Uh, but we need some suggestions, uh, basically, from our audience here. So, who are they? Husband and wife. Husband and wife. Okay. Husband and wife. All right. Uh, I think that's the only suggestion we get in this scene. Okay. All right. So, uh, we have a uh, husband and wife, and uh, sounds like a song. Honey, I want to let you know that I picked up the dry cleaning, and uh, unfortunately, they, uh, there's a little incident with your favorite suit. Um, the zoot suit? Yeah, the zoot suit. I'm, I'm the gold so LeMay sorry. Gold LeMay zoot suit? Yeah, the gold LeMay zoot suit. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, they kind of ruined it. They kind of ruined it. Sounds like a song on Casey. They kind of ruined it. They ruined your suit. They kind of ruined it. They ruined your suit. But the good news is they'll be replacing it. They don't have gold lame, but it's gonna be purple. That's even better somehow. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad it worked out. All right. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad it worked out. I was nervous because I, you know, I know that sometimes you're okay with purple and sometimes you don't like it. I love purple. Purple's my favorite color. Good, good, good. You know, it's funny because I, what I found is that uh, the people that like purple don't just like it. They love purple. Like it's almost a religion. Well, I do love purple. Well, I do love purple <laughs> on the... That show called again, I don't remember. Uh, Family Matters. Family Matters. Oh, I love purple. I love it so much. I think I'm going to divorce you, honey, and marry the color purple because it's so good. I respect your choice. <laughs> I don't really love it that much. Well, that's that's a relief because getting divorced is a lot of paperwork and lawyers' fees. Yeah. Plus, it kind of goes against the spirit of this whole show, I think. I agree. Um, Let's just go to so counseling. I think I need help with my addiction to purple. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was that serious. You know, I love that I'm still learning new things about you, even though we've been married for 30 years. We've been married for 30 years. Sounds like a song on Casey. We've been married for 30 years. 30 years of laundry. 30 of dry cleaning, 30 years of purple. Let's keep it going though. I love purple too. Scene, scene. All right, thank you guys. That was great. We'll be back in just a moment. And we're back. Uh, I want to shift gears here for just a moment and uh, I want to check in with one of my good friends all the way from Tennessee. Shonda Pierce. Hello, Shonda. all. Hello. Welcome to Light Talk. Is it? Yeah. And am I in? Am I in the light enough, or should I turn the light on? Oh no, you are. You are definitely in the light, even though it looks like there, there's a storm on the horizon. But you're still. You are in the light. How is that better? 
this is my this is what I know of technology. Yeah. <laughs> a light on your phone. And you know how many hours it takes me to get this light to turn off? How many? To try to find it. I know. It was <laughs> bright and sunny out here, and the minute your show started, a storm starts coming uh -oh, in. That, that's what it was. <laughs> exactly. It's your fault, Sam. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good. Thank you. I know it's Listen, been a long time. All dressed up in your suit and your tie. I feel so completely underdressed. <laughs> I don't know how this works. Yeah, I think the last time I saw you was in Columbus, Georgia. Oh, yeah, when we, we came, had jobs. Yeah, when you... Um, Back when we had a job, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, See, I got to get me a show like yours, like Light Talk. I got to get a show so I can just have someone to talk to. <laughs> do, do you remember the first, the first time you were on Light Talk years ago? Oh, Lord, yes. Backstage, wasn't it? Charles Stanley. At Charles Stanley's church. That's yes. exactly right. Yes, and we kind of snuck around the inner sanctum to see what it looked like. I know, it's always funny. The TV <laughs> preachers always scare me to death. Yes. yes. Charles Stanley is a good one, but sometimes there's a few wacky ones. Let's be honest. I'm not going to name names because I need my job. But, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, yes, that's good. That. That's good. Well, as they slowly pass away, then you feel more free talking about them. Yeah, that that's it's okay. the Christian <laughs> way. That's, that's oh that's my Christian. gosh! And Gary Chapman is calling right now. Oh my! Well, hey, bring him, bring him on. I can't. I should Facetime him and make him. But yeah, you know, now, we've been doing a little something on Thursday nights, have and you? Uh, and it's been interesting. You know, I I was not really. I mean, I knew who Gary Chapman, the singer songwriter, was for years and years. And, and when he was married to Amy Graham, and then, you know, they had a horrible thing, the tweet, the Lord, the devil is always trying to interfere when people are doing something for the kingdom. And so, so the devil just write their marriage over the coals. And, um, and now they're both doing great. And of course, Amy's married to Vince and I'm friends with Vince because of the Opry and I've become new friends with uh, Gary and here I'm telling all their dirty laundry. But, uh, but they all tell it, too. That's what's so precious. And they're all such great friends. And his wife, Cassie, is a cutie. And anyway, I am so, I love survivor stories. And then I love not people that just survive, but then thrive after their stuff. Because I've had stuff, you know. And I, and I think that's why I'm so, he's like the brother, I, you know, the brother. My, my real brother tells me what to do all the time. He's a shrink. I need a real broken brother. And so Gary is my really broken brother. And when he sees this, he's going to go, what? But it, all that to say, we've been doing this thing on Thursday nights, just Facebook, like quarantine comics. And when the first night, we invited Jeff Allen and Bone Hampton over. Exactly. And because we could get out. Then they shut us down and we couldn't get out anymore. But Gary, he's healthy as a horse. He comes over still every Thursday night. And we get online. Last Thursday, we interviewed... Marsha Blackburn, the senator. Yeah, so we're probably on a watch list right now, the government's watch list. <laughs> well, but yeah, it's been interesting. This whole quarantine thing has been a mess. I was going to say, well, you look good. I mean, oh. um, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to touch on a, a couple of things real quick. Uh, one, for, for anybody watching right now, that uh, to give them to give them a line of hope. Oh. In the middle, in the middle of their storm, because you and I both can relate to different types of storms, right? And um, and so I, I wanted to be able to to share something, you know, for our viewers, whether they're on the internet or whether they're in the TV audience, right? Uh, maybe going through something right now to give them some hope. It, I tell you, it is. Um, it's really the whole quarantine thing is a test to our fortitude as a Christian. Um, and, and, and even as a Christian or non-Christian, it is a test to see what stuff you're made of. I think this is a great opportunity for, for Christians to express where they get their hope. And so, and we all know my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Um, and even that's really hard because hope is something you have to go after. It doesn't just show up naturally. We're in a naturally fallen world with fear, filled with fear. And so you have to really activate your faith. You have to really work hard to push back on the dark. And, and 
And for those that fail the fight, just know that the next day you get to try again. Hey, you know, that's good and then the next day you get to try again, and the, or the next hour you get to try again. I woke up this morning with a, you know, and it's the devil because the devil loves fear. It will keep you paralyzed with a with a little bit of worry, you know, and worry. My pastor says is a sin, which I slap him every time he says it. <laughs> Cause I have that kind of relationship with my pastor. And so, but I, I did wake up with a little worry going, okay, it's been now a few months. It's going to be a few more months, you know, and you and I Sam, are the same. If we don't work, we don't get paid. That's right. And I, and it's not that I, I am blessed. I'll be just fine. I'll go live in a little cabin in the woods that I have, you know, that I host people at the funny farm as you well know. But what I, got really fearful of is the people that I take care of, the people that I bless because I work. One, my tithe, my, you know, the, my, I take care, I, I'm a big supporter of Branches Counseling Center. I'm a big supporter of the Funny Farm where I host pastors and their families that need a vacation. I, you know, I have things that I'm involved in, food for the hungry, you know, and so I started, I let the fear start speaking to me uh, about all the things that are going to fall apart because I can't work. And isn't that so stupid how much stuff I took out of the Lord's hands when he's so much bigger than my paycheck. He's so much bigger than any of my worry and, you know, my frustration. He can cover it. He's covered us both through so much that I find myself, you know, I go two ways. I either start, you know, worrying about my own life. And then I realize, oh, my Lord, do you remember that one storm he brought us through? Remember the cancer he brought you through? Do you remember I lost my husband and he brought me through that? Do you remember I lost my mother? You know, so here's what I've learned. And oh, this is a big, long answer to your question. I said this to Nazareth the other day. Boy, my hair really does look bad. I got to get these roots done. And I have ADD, so I just go off the rails on something all the time. See, you guys don't have to worry about it. I, I see you're letting the gray come in. Yeah, yeah. It's... But so am I because I'm quarantined. But well, I'm trying to cover it up. My hair had to come back in. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You lost your... It really but... doesn't matter what color. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, I always tell people, I try to find the practical things. And one of the most practical tools in your arsenal as a Christian is post-it notes. You go around your house, when a good thought, now when the negative comes, throw those out and keep giving those to the Lord. What I always go is find a good day or a positive thought. Maybe it's a verse that really blessed you. Maybe it's a day you remember that was so good, like the birth of a child or your wedding day or, you know, some, something that, that when I just started talking, your list, your list, making a list, your listeners, I hope are making a list of there were moments that were good accomplishment. If you graduated from high school, if you graduated from college, you, some accomplishment, some job that you finished, a closet that you finally cleaned out, put that on a post-it note, fill post-it notes full of, you know, of good things that happen and then plaster them everywhere. And you'll begin to make a collage of blessing, of gratitude, and then you'll become grateful of all these different things. Because, see, we forget in the dark times, we forget there was a good day. Mm. And, and when you start telling the devil how many good days you've had, he can't stand that good news. And, and, and he will flee. He will run. Because you have just told him and showed him the mercies of God in your life. And if God has showed you mercy before and given you a blessing, he's not going to just stop overnight. He that's continues right. to do so. And so that, that, and I had to do that this morning. I had to preach it myself and do it this morning. Go, no, 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 no. You know, it's just a stormy day. It's gloomy. And, you know, I'm, I'm prone for clinical depression. So the gloom and doom is always waiting. And I, you know, I got to get my meds going. I got to get my, my, journal out got to read a few extra scriptures got to play my praise music a little bit louder and before long i forgot what i was gloomy about yeah yeah that that's great advice right there yeah and my and shrink would charge you 90 bucks for that but there you go <laughs> well and I, what what i find interesting about it is that on at the on start of this interview uh just checking in with you that there's a storm on the horizon Yes. So. Wah, wah, wah. I don't know. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. I'm not really good with the camera moving. <laughs> Wait, maybe it's over there. Yeah, it looks spooky. <laughs> 
So, uh, well, Shonda, I know that we've, uh, we've got to cut uh, to a, well, we got to take a break. Actually, I wanted to share um, a trailer from a new movie that you are in, Selfie Dad. Trailer. You haven't seen it? No. Oh well, guess what? We have. We have. Will I be able to see it? Yeah. Well, unfortunately. <laughs> no, when I watch not right here. Again. Yes, you will see it. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna uh, show that trailer. Okay. Before before we jump off here, uh, how can people get a hold of you so that they can book you uh, or? Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, someday in the future, book me. <laughs> But Shonda Pierce is my Facebook, and I answer, I answer my mail, and there's all kinds of information. But Shonda, C H O N D A, dot O R G is my okay. uh, is my website, whatever. Okay. Well, be sure to check out Shonda dot O R G, and uh, we hope that you enjoy this trailer featuring Shonda and Michael Jr. And there are a bunch of other people in there. Yeah. Um, so, Shonda, thank you again. We really thank appreciate you. you coming on the show. And uh, we'll take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. My name is Ben Marcus. Somehow I found myself as the main editor of a reality TV show called Rosie's Roses. You made me look like a moron for heaven's sake. I used to be a comic. That's where my heart is. Well, dude, why are you out there running with this? No way, man. I got a family. Can you help out around the house? Jack needs help with his math homework. I'll fix the toilet. You're watching a video. That's not math. This guy is funny. He has to be. He's a millionaire. A millionaire? He's a pazer. What? And this is my very first video. I got two atheist friends. Every time I'm around them, I sneeze just to see what they're going to say. That funny. The nominees this year are. I feel like I'm doing this all on my own. Have you ever seen the movie War Room? I don't really like Christian films. Where you been? Your daughter's play. This is my first time in like 20 years. I finally get to do something I love. For once in your life, have some balance. Uh, I don't even know where I got off track. What if it's a test? What if you dove deeper into the Bible than you ever have before? I can't afford to be sitting around reading the Bible. You can't afford not to read the Bible. <laughs> it's got awkward. A little bit, yeah. I it. There's no way I can ask you to be a better daughter if I'm not willing to be a better father. And I am. God can do incredible things. Some of these things I just can't fix without some sort of direction. And I'm finding it right here in the Bible. I'm Sophie Dad. I thought it was the police. It's the Broly's. We're going to be all right. All right, guys, are we, are we clear? We're clear? Uh, yeah, you got time. Okay. Okay, all right. Uh, let me just take this real quick, and uh, then we'll be, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's make sure that's good. No? Maybe? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're back. Okay, great. All right, everybody, I'm Sam, and uh, um I tell you what, uh, why don't I go ahead and wrap this episode up with, uh, with a nice thought here, and I've got it. Uh, so one of the things my good friend had reminded me of was um, he was a really great friend to the community in the Chattahoochee Valley area. His name was Ron Anderson. He was artistic director at the Springer Opera House and one of my dear friends. I worked with Ron on a number of shows, and, um, and I wanted to share something that he used to always say, and it is, do your job well and treat people nicely. I'll say that again. Do your job well and treat people nicely. See, a lot of times we get caught up in doing our job well, but we don't treat people with kindness or respect. In fact, I've even been guilty at one time of, of stepping over people, and I had to ask for forgiveness so many times. Maybe there's somebody that you need to ask forgiveness for. I mean, it might have been something that, that was done five days ago, five minutes ago, five years ago. Whatever it is, just remember, do your job well and treat people nicely. Well, we've had a lot of fun, a lot of fun on this episode of Light Talk. So uh, thank you, take care, and God bless. Oh, hey guys. <laughs>